Hey, my name's Steven, coming at you from Florida. Hello, y'all. This is Kevin, coming from Texas. My name's David. I'm coming from the heartland, Ohio. And welcome to the Brothers Born Podcast. And we're excited to talk to you. Yes, we are. Unlikely. Hey guys, how you doing? All right. Very well, very well. Good. We uh we have the tournament of champions today. So, you know, last year we did the unlikely throwdowns. This year we did unlikely throwdowns. And we're taking the champions from last year. Each of us has a champion last year and this year. And we're teaming them up together for an ultimate showdown of sorts. And we'll be all. Yeah, it will certainly be crazy. Uh, we talked before about fan fiction with these things. I will say this format we're about to do. It's a little different than the rest of our unlikely throwdowns. Because instead of just like using the battle of you know, research and tactics. We, we're just going to throw these characters in a hodgepodge and make up a story. And it's going to be super fun. So, uh, Stephen, you have Papa Smurf and... Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Uh, David, you have, like, what? Hans Gruber and Santa Claus? I'm coming with the Christmas crew. And I, and I have uh, Mario and the Xenomorph. I'm trying to think of what sort of scenario these characters would even remotely be connected in. <laughs> So this, is gonna I, be inter- this is going to be uh, interesting. So Boba Fett, you know, he just finished up a job um, on a Star Wars planet that was crazy. Um, and he's, he kind of got into a little bit of a stuck in an asteroid belt where there's some space stations. And he crashed for a second. It wasn't too bad, though. But he had to get off and, you know, do a couple of repairs. And uh, he got back on the ship and he gets a phone call. Or whatever you call it in uh, Star space Wars, phone? yeah, um, space phone call. He gets on me on the cell. He gets a call from the Asian Dawn, which is this like faction in Asia, fictional faction that Hans Gruber made up in Die Hard to uh, all like he uses them as a like ransom, like hey, let these people out of jail, and I'll, I'll you know give you your hostages back or whatever. And Asian Dawn's kind of upset that he did that because, you know, they put them, they were on the verge of getting out of jail and now they're back on the map again and they're all upset. So they hired Boba Fett to come get Hans Gruber. And it also, right after that, he gets a call from Papa Smurf, who's like, hey, I got to go to the Mushroom Kingdom with my people. And I'm a wanted person. I killed Voldemort. There's a lot of Death Eaters going after me. And uh, I need some help to give me my bodyguard. That would be great. And P- Boba Fett's. How, why does he need a bodyguard? when he killed Voldemort he because he's he's kicking all the smurfs with him so he just needs a little extra okay. extra set of yeah, they, yep, got, yep. They, they just need a little help going in the mushroom kingdom you know so, so Boba, okay. Boba Fett's like all right I'll go and take care of Hans Gruber and I'll help Papa Smurf and he starts heading towards you where those people are and he hears like a weird sound in the back of his slave one his ship like some some banging around he's like, that's weird I'm the only one on this ship Meanwhile, while all that's going on with Boba Fett, in the Mushroom Kingdom, Mario's chilling. He's chilling with his, his girl, Princess Peach, you know, doing his thing. And then uh, he hears through his network of toads, there's possibly a, a, a some, some strangers entering the Mushroom Kingdom. So uh, Mario decides that he's going to go and, and investigate. So... All this is happening, I guess. Visitors coming to the Mushroom Kingdom. It so happens that it's, I guess it's probably around this time of year. Christmas preparation is getting into full effect. Hans Gruber knows that he's a wanted man. Boba Fett's coming for him. What better place to go than the North Pole? So Hans Gruber takes his whole crew of terrorists, Theo and Heinrich and Franz and all these other terrorists. Um, but he takes all 12 of them with him because he needs them. He needs his boys with him to protect him. And when he's up there, he sees uh, Santa Claus doing his thing, getting ready for Christmas with all the elves. 
making toys, you know, mass producing everything. And he thinks, man, who needs the Nakatomi Tower when I have the North Pole right here in front of me? If I can control Santa Claus and all his toys, I can control the world, is what he's thinking. So he goes there with an intention of, you know, taking over the North Pole and kind of being like the overseer of Christmas, because Christmas has always been important to him. That's when he does most of his terrorist activity anyways. <laughs> so he goes up there. He's like, Santa, Santa's elves catch him, you know, when he's doing his recon with his terrorists. And um, the elves, they wrap him up with Christmas paper, Christmas wrapping paper, because they're very quick and very stealthy. They wrap him up and they take him hostage and send him to Santa. Santa Claus, we found some intruders trying to look at what their Christmas presents are, something like that. The elves think they're just up there, you know, trying to, they want to keep Santa's operation as under wraps as what possible. Was, they don't know who. What's on Heinrich's Christmas list? I don't know. Heinrich wasn't one of the main ones. I think probably, I don't know. Maybe he needs a drill, superpower drill, probably. To do some woodworking. <laughs> I like how uh, I like how Hans Gruber specifically schedules his terrorist activities around Christmas. Oh, he does. He does. <laughs> that's the best time, man, because you know that's people aren't expecting it as much. Maybe I don't know. But the elves wrap, they're wrapped in Christmas present, tied with Christmas ribbon. They bring them before Santa's tribunal. And Santa's there and he's like, you have quite the network of terrorists. And I notice all of them are on the, on the naughty list. I feel like we need to fix that. We don't want you on the naughty list. Why don't, instead of fighting against us, you join up with us with your resourcefulness. You have Theo. He's the uh, tech guy. You have you have all these wonderful assets, and I have my army of elves. <laughs> what do you say we just work together to make this the most wonderful Christmas ever? Now, Hans Gruber, he's like, oh, that's not really my jam, <laughs> but I know Boba Fett's after me, so maybe Santa and his elves can help protect me because really, who's going to mess with Santa? Um, so that's kind of how they got teamed up together. Santa Claus, is, he decides... This year, he's going to use the pipes, you know, go through pipes, maybe just to kind of get in. He wants to get a feel for what's what's happening, you know, like, oh, how's little Johnny doing? I'm going to go through his bathroom pipes <laughs> and find out. I'm going to send some elves. I'm going to send Hans. He gives Hans magical powers. Not that Hans could use them, but he could at least have the effects. Of them. Now Anyways, I have a machine gun. Network of ho, pipes. ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> they go through this pipes. And of course, he takes his magic sack with him. He's because got he takes it with him wherever he goes. Yeah. He takes his, a few of his select elves, Hans and all the terrorists. Hermie is there. Hermie came back from the rat army. Um, <laughs> and so he takes them all there. And when he goes through these pipes, somehow, believe it or not, he ends up in the Mushroom Kingdom. Work, work, work. He comes up and he's in the Mushroom Kingdom. And he's like, ho, ho, ho. Where am I? <laughs> I like how he ho, ho, ho. Unfortunately, where he's at. <laughs> unfortunately for Hans, I mean, he does have Santa and Santa's uh, mafia of elves protecting him, but Hans doesn't realize that his that um, Boba Fett is actually on his way to the Mushroom Kingdom as well, trying to get Hans Gruber. So I think that's pretty much how my group gets up there. Is, the, is what I'm thinking. So Boba Fett, we'll say we'll screw up this part real quick. He gets to wherever Papa Smurf re reveals where his like mushroom, his own little mushroom village is. Boba Fett gets there. He gets to all the Smurfs. And Papa Smurf, he's like, all right, get in the back. Papa Smurf, you're up front with me. He, uh, He's like, all right, where, where, you wanted to go to the Mushroom Kingdom? And Papa Smurf's like, yeah. La, 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 la. And he, um, he's like, I want, there's some new, uh, la, la, some la, la, new la, mushrooms I want to get for my, my other Smurf children to make some new special, mushrooms. special mushrooms. I can, they, you know, they're always a little sensitive about being little. So I want to give them a chance to know what it feels like to be big. We're going to have big Smurfs here. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's he... terrifying, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, oh. well, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give them the opportunity to see what it feels like to be big. I know the Mushroom Kingdom has special mushrooms. So let's go there. That's going to be my Christmas gift to them. And then Boba Fett's like, all right. And then he gets a notification from, I don't know, some other galactic empire, uh, uh, bounty hunter. that says, hey, just so you know, Hans Gruber is last sighted in the Mushroom Kingdom. And Boba Fett's like, oh, perfect. Two birds with one stone. Let's do this. So all the Smurfs are in the back of the slave one and Boba Fett. What's the rattling that's happening down in the bottom, though? I'm still not sure what that is. I mean, it, 
he hears he heard it again right before he picked up the Smurfs. He's like, that's weird. Oh well, I'll check that out. Maybe my ship it must be those Smurfs goofing around. Now. <laughs> so he's headed to the Mushroom Kingdom, enslave one with the Smurfs, Papa Smurf and him in the front, and the rest of them are in the back. I think it's Kevin's turn. <laughs> okay, so I, I'm gonna go and say that the I don't know what the rattling would be in his ship, but I, I feel like Boba Fett is a. Uh, be- that mission that he was on before where he had asteroids and everything like that you're talking about. Yeah. I think while he was on that mission, um, he was actually obtaining a set of, uh, some, some rare cargo for, a uh, for Imperial moth who wants to do some experimentation. That cargo happened to be two xenomorph eggs. <laughs> so, so I think during whatever the rattling is, it causes a malfunction in his ship. Oh, so, so these eggs come falling out of the cargo hatch because, the rattling was something wrong with the door and then like the door busts open and Smurf's like, Oh, the door's open. And Boba Fett's like, Oh no. Andy Smurf. Be like, ah! <laughs> sure. So one he loses a couple out. Smurfs. <laughs> he loses a couple Smurfs and, <laughs> and, and the two eggs fall out. One, one falls on the ground and then uh, a Goomba comes coming up to it. Cause you know, Goombas are kind of dumb and the egg opens up. The face hugger comes out and gets the Goomba. Attaches <laughs> to the Goomba. <laughs> so that Goomba becomes, a Goomba Xenomorph. Excellent. I love the it. other egg. Wait, wait, if, if, it's I, a, if it's a Goomba, though, it doesn't really have a chest. So where does it pop out? I don't know. Top of, <laughs> the top of his head? It probably. <laughs> <Or his> back. <laughs> I fear you just made your Xenomorph. I thought it would take over easily, but now that it's in the body of a Goomba, I don't think he's going to be in play much at all. See, I would disagree because, you know, like, you know, just because a Xenomorph takes on attributes of its host doesn't mean it's still not a Xenomorph. It's still a Xenomorph. Santa has big boots, steps on the xenomorph. Goomba, five xenomorph, you're out. Okay, who's next? <laughs> so I'm just kidding. So just kidding. Uh, the other egg, it, it kind of lands and it rolls underneath this question mark block. And there's a uh, there's a coupon on top of the question mark block. So the, the egg opens up because uh, it senses the, the Koopa. And this face hugger pops out of the egg to go get to the Koopa, but instead latches onto the question mark block somehow. <laughs> it gets inside of it. This will come into play later. <laughs> yes, that's important. So, so this happens, and you know Mario's still going around the Mushroom Kingdom, and he sees uh you know Santa coming out of the pipe, and he mistakes Santa's sack as a turtle shell, so he thinks this is a new Koopa kid or something. So he's he's ready to you know attack this new uh this new what he th- perceives to be a new Koopa. All right. So right now we have Santa Claus. And his army of elves and Hans Gruber and his band of terrorists coming out of a pipe, yes. discombobulated because they think they're actually somewhere in France <laughs> and somebody's home. And then we have Mario just happened to be strolling by doing his rounds in his kingdom um, that runs into Santa and Hans Gruber's army. Right now, Boba Fett and the Smurfs are still on the ship coming down. And for some reason, we have a Goomba Xenomorph floating around. Hopefully, he's not you know, walking off down a ledge like the Goombas do. Like, hopefully he's between two walls and he's just going <laughs> back and forth. You know? <laughs> but, so that's what's happening right now. So, so what happens, what sets off this throwdown? Man, so. But we also have some random question mark block with, with the Xenomorph showing in it. I forgot about that. So, um, okay. so about Boba Fett and Papa Smurf, they're going to come in now. I, they, they, uh, he's like, all right, sorry, Papa Smurf. I really got to figure out what's going on with my ship. We lost a couple of your Smurfs. Luckily, <laughs> luckily Smurf Fett's still okay. Let me just land real quick in this weird place and let's just do some assessment. So he lands um, in the Mushroom Kingdom and Papa Smurf's like, dancing trees! <laughs> and Because, uh, you know, that's a thing there. Um, and uh, the, he opens up the ship. He looks around in the background. Well, he hears in the distance some sleigh bells and he's like, what? And he turns around and he's like, Let's go scope this out, Papa Smurf. You can look for your mushrooms. You're in the Mushroom Kingdom now. We'll we'll meet back here. And Papa Smurf's like, "You look like you could use a hand there, fella. Let me come with you." And he comes with you, comes with them. And the Smurfs and Smurfette follow in tow. La 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 la. la, la, la. And Boba Fett. He, what does Boba Fett do about the third theme Smurf theme he starts, song? He starts bobbing right his now. head a little bit. It's, and he starts actually singing it. He's like, "Oh no, no, no stop!" <laughs> he like tells himself to stop. But they're headed towards the jingle bell sound. And as they approach. They see a plumber attacking a 
a sack. So, <laughs> so, so Mario, Mario is going after Santa, and he, and as that's happening, he also sees the the, the spaceship land, and he's like, "Mamma mia!" <laughs> so then he, so you now you don't know what's going on. So he tries to, he, he decides he's going to regroup. So he steps away from Santa for a minute, and then he sees a, a you know, question mark block. And it, as Mario does when he sees a question mark block, he's like, oh, "I got to break that thing." So he breaks it, and out of the top of the question mark block. You know, there was a coupon there and he, you know, he takes that out and picks up the shell and he throws it at Santa. And then, uh, oh, oh, oh. young man, young man. And he knows there's a, there's a new suit that comes out of this. You know, he's, he's had frog suits and, you know, bumblebee suits and cat suits come out of question mark blocks before. This, he's never seen this one before. It's an all black suit. So he puts it on right away and it turns out it's a, it's a xenomorph suit. So now Mario's got a xenomorph suit and just in time because <laughs> the, the Goomba, the, the Goomba uh, that well, what was a Goomba, but is now a, a Xenomorph, was actually getting ready to attack Mario. But now that Mario's in a Xenomorph Xenomorph su- uh, suit, the Xenomorph just assumes that Mario. Hey, doesn't the Goomba take out one of Hans's terrorists real quick? Oh yeah, yes, yes, of course. Okay. One Hans, one Hans's terrorist is like, oh, I gotta go take a leak or whatever, and then you know, and then suddenly the, the Goomba, the Goomba Xenomorph takes him out, and he's getting ready to attack Mario. When the uh, you know Mario puts on the suit, so the Xenomorph's like, "Oh, this is like another Xenomorph, cool." So he just like kind of allies himself with Mario instead, and decides to follow him around. So what's happened now? Like Santa's getting beat up. He doesn't. He's still. He's Santa. He's not. He doesn't understand what's happening. But obviously, his magic. He's not really being hurt by mush and like or turtle shell getting thrown at him. But while this is going on, Hans is like, "What did I get myself into? <laughs> <laughs> this is not my jam." But then. One of Hans's uh, henchmen, uh, let's say his first one, let's say Heinrich. Heinrich, he sees another block and he's like, Santa got a weird, or Mario got a weird suit out of that other one. What if I press this one? He hits it and it happens to be a money block. Da-ding, da-ding, da-ding. <laughs> so all of, you know what Hans, that's Hans's jam, you know, getting money. So Hans is like, oh, <laughs> he sends his, his, uh, his terrorist team out to get all this money block. So he's starting to collect this money from Mario's world. While Mario's distracted from uh, Santa and um, the Goomba, while Mario's in his new suit exploring, the henchmen of Hans Gruber are taking all the coins. So they're kind of reverting back to their old selves. They forgot the deal they made with Santa where they want to try to do a good job. <laughs> so they're there taking all the money. Santa's trying to figure out what's going on with this turtle shell. He shoves it in his sack and then he sends his, his elves out to try to contain Hans Gruber's army or Hans Gruber's henchmen that are just collecting all the coins. Boba Fett sees Hans Gruber. He, he hears the jingle bells initially, and now he hears the da-ding, da-ding. And he's like, that's my target. And he uh, he fires one of his knee rocket things over that way. And uh, it explodes. I won't say yet because we're still pretty early. It explodes near Hans Gruber, maybe killing another one of the terrorists, possibly. I feel like, I feel <laughs> like we've been going for a while. But yeah, why not? Let's. Okay, he kills a terrorist. So, Takes and two terrorists Papa. down. <laughs> Pop's first like, what are you doing? I'm just here to collect some mushrooms. He's like, sorry, Papa, I got another agenda here too. <laughs> and and Smurfette's like, well, let's just gather our mushrooms. And they start looking. They also happen to find some blocks and they hit them. And now the Smurfs have mushrooms. And lo and behold, as you predicted, there are a bunch of bigger Smurfs now, including Papa Smurf. And one Papa Smurf. He's cunning. He finds a fire flower. Papa can't be big. Papa can't be big. We're going to be in trouble. Papa's big and he has a fire flower. So look out, folks. All this is happening while Carl and Theo and Eddie are just trying to get money out of the block. And, and Hans Gruber is starting to wonder why he got into this to begin with because he almost got blown up by a, a blast from Boba Fett. So Mario with his new Xenomorph partner, he doesn't quite understand, but he's, he takes it. He, he sees all these you know, suddenly the appearance of these large Smurfs. He's like, oh, well, these little dudes like taking all my mushrooms up in here, Marshall Kingdom. <laughs> so he calls upon his uh, his army Wait of toads. Minute. Really quick, when they're big, just so you know, it goes, la, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> so he, calls upon his ar- he calls upon his army of toads to come at a slower tempo. So now you got like an army of toads thrown down with some like Smurfs. And then there's like, you know, some elves that they're getting in the mix. So, you know, you got these armies thrown down. Elves, toads, and the elves. The elves have actually found some mushrooms as well. <laughs> so they've grown up a little so, bit. So, el- elves, toads, and and Smurfs are all thrown down. <laughs> so Boba Fett runs, chases over. 
near Hans. Hans is kind of by Santa and he uses his flamethrower and and uh, burns Santa's hat off entirely. And if he misses Hans, but so like he's going after him, he accidentally burns Santa's hat. And uh, he's like, dang it. Sorry, big man. And he's trying to go back to. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Young man, I remember you from your Christmas special. Ho, ho, ho. That was the first time I ever met you. Christmas. Why are you attacking me this way? Ho, ho. It's not, nothing personal. I just need that man. <laughs> Mrs. Claus made this. Mrs. Claus made this hat for me. Jingle feet, twinkle, twinkle toes, tambourine man. Tambourine Chase man. After Bob. <laughs> Wrap up Boba Fett with your magical Christmas paper. This is war. <laughs> so they, they wrap up Boba Fett. He's like, no, dang it. So he uses his fire or something to burn the wrap paper off. And after he does that, Hans, you can't see Hans anymore. Where did Hans go? Oh, Hans is off. He's like, this, this is whacked out. I'm going to get some money with my crew. Two of them are already dead. While they collect the money, I'm out of here. I'm hiding. <clears throat> so he's kind of hiding behind one, another pipe, maybe, okay. is my guess. He's trying to re- recruit, make a plan because of all these characters, Hans has the least amount of physical strength, really. Um, he has one of the better minds of the group, but he doesn't like there's all these giant smurfs and he doesn't know what to do right now. <laughs> half his crew's going for money. The other half has been killed. Um, he's double crossed his ally whose hat's been burned, you know, like so Hans is recouping right now, trying to figure out what to do next. And then all of a sudden, um, Boba Fett. Is he's wrapped up still? Um, so he can escape the Sarlacc, but he can't r- escape some wrapping paper. He's, well, he's... The, the elves keep going around and around. And Santa, he said war before, but he didn't really mean war. He just he's trying to bring Boba Fett back. Young man, young man, think about what you're doing. Ho, 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 ho. We marched in a Christmas parade together. Ho, ho. But um, you know, eventually the Smurfs, I think, come and start taking out the elves because they pushing the elves out of the way because they're giant now and they just see their friend that they came with Boba Fett, their protector getting hurt oh, yeah. by the elves or getting contained. So they're getting, the elves are out of there. Boba Fett breaks through the wrapper because first elves are so quick. He can't break through it. They keep ribbon, ribbon, ribbon around him, but now he's able to break through and he chases after Hans Gruber. Gotcha. And Mario's over here. He, he don't know what's going on with that, but he does know that the Smurfs are taking all the mushrooms from the Mushroom Kingdom. I and mean, he needs those mushrooms. So he grabs <laughs> his partner, the Xenomorph. He's like, hey, uh, let's get to the Smurfs. Uh, so they so you go out there. How Smurfs, does he know what the Smurfs are called? I don't know. <laughs> how do, how, how do Indians people here. know where the Mushroom Kingdom even is? So anyways, <laughs> um, in Xenomorph, it's all like, you know, it takes a cue. It starts going to Smurfs. It's like, oh, cool, snacks. So now the Xenomorph's like hunting down some Smurfs. Start. But they're big, man. It doesn't big. matter. Xenomorph can take the ones that aren't big yet. Oh, Xenomorph, okay. Okay, Xenomorph can take out some big Smurfs. So he's he's starting to take them out one by one. The Xenomorph. And so all this is happening when I just realized something. Hans Gruber, like he realizes he's a little bit overmatched, and he jumps into that between those two brick walls where the Goomba Xenomorph's going back. <laughs> and we never forth. said he was doing that. <laughs> two pillars. But he's going back and forth. Hans Gruber happens to jump in there by mistake. And he jumps in there, and Boba Fett jumps in there, too. And when Boba Fett lands, he says, Mr. Gruber, you, you got to be careful of heights. <laughs> and he takes his gun and aims at him. Any last words? And, uh, and- but then somehow Boba Fett's gun gets jammed just for a second. And when it does, Hans Gruber all of a sudden, whoa, that is a nice suit, Mr. Fett. It would be a shame to ruin it. And it, he whips out his pistol, he blasts Boba Fett. And it just then, Boba Fett's gun also works. And he, he doesn't hit Hans Gruber. They both shoot at the same time, but he blasts a hole in the wall. And so the Xenomorph is, now has an escape route. Poof, Boba met, missed him. So what's happening to Hans, man? He, he got Boba Fett. Hans Gruber was running out of there. Then he gets distracted all of a sudden by... No, he wouldn't do that. He's too good of a leader. So he's running out of there. He's at the bottom. You know how sometimes the Mushroom Kingdom, there's a big pit, then there's another one, but some of them are never ending, right? So he goes down, and he, he's not looking because he's looking at the Xenomorph Goomba chasing him. And then he falls down another pit, which is one of those never-ending pits, much like when he falls off the Nakatomi Tower. <laughs> it's just in slow motion as well? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's like, ah. That's perfect. <laughs> falls down, and thus the end of Hans Gruber. That is the perfect way for Hans Gruber to go out. I love it. <laughs> so now, meanwhile, the xenomorph he realizes 
even though I'm in a Goomba body, I can do other things. So instead of falling them down like a Xeno, like a Goomba, we really do and fall down as well. The Xenomorph can somehow get out of there. I'll leave that up to Kevin. Okay, so so after um, Hans falls to his plummets to his death, the Xenomorph you know climbs up the side of the wall, and now now the Xenomorph is even more loose. He finds some Smurfs. He starts attacking the Smurfs. You know, eating some of them or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and Mario's like, oh, mamma mia, my partner, he's a crazy. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> so, uh, you know, but he doesn't mind too much because, you know, Mario's not too happy about these Smurfs eating all his mushrooms. And then he... Uh, Seriously, man. <laughs> he locks in again on Santa and sees sees that sack on his back and he's like, it's a Koopa kid. So he goes after saw Santa and, and jumps on on Santa's uh, now bare head that no longer has a, a hat on it. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, man, his, his weakness. Oh, 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 Mario, my little plumber friend. I've oh, You've always been on the nice list. Why are you attacking me this way? This is my magic sack, which carries your special plungers that I usually give you for Christmas. Oh, oh, oh. Mario's like, <laughs> Mario's like oh, it's a Koopa. You're not a Koopa. So, so he jumps off of Santa's hat, uh, head, realizing his mistake. And so Santa resolved that conflict. Very good, Santa. And Papa Smurf, he's a gigantic fireball comes flying, and he he, he knows he knows Boba Fett died. He's not exactly sure what caused it, but he has a feeling that it was one of like the elves or Hans Gruber's terrorists. He just has a feeling, so he just throws a giant fireball because you know when he's giant, the fireballs are also giant now for some reason. And he goes he, off he right up, by burns up Theo. He burns up Theo. There it is. Oh, Theo. <laughs> He was the tech guy, man. <laughs> Killed the tech guy. All right. So Theo's burning up in fire, running around. Um, and Mario's realized his mistake, but he still doesn't like the fact that Santa's trying to take over his world, but he's not ready to deal with that yet. He's looking at all these giant Smurfs and elves. The elves are wrapping everyone up in giant wrapping paper for some reason, because <laughs> um, that's the only thing they know how to do. Yeah, when else tries to wrap up the xenomorph, the xenomorph, you know, eats the elf. Jingle feet, jingle feet. All of a sudden, Santa starts to go savage mode when that happens. <laughs> and he takes, <laughs> he's got his magic sack. He throws it over his shoulder. Ho, ho, ho. Now for a taste of my magic. And he starts taking out all these toys, creating them, throwing them out. Things that can like all these giant Smurf traps that he's creating. Smurfs are getting trapped up by everything. Santa's just throwing out his magic everywhere, trying to protect his elf army. The Smurfs are being contained. He realizes his partner's gone, but his gang has reverted to their old tendencies. So he's, you know, throwing traps at Hans Gruber's gang. They're getting wrapped up in wrapping paper because Santa still, he really, he wants to resolve the situation, but he's getting a little frustrated. So it's especially since Jingle Feet's now perished. And Papa Smurf says, what is this wizard? I defeated Voldemort. I am a I am a wizard, but you seem very powerful. Wh- wh- where are you from, big man? I am from the North Pole. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all going on. Xenomorph decides he takes out another. Uh, he, he takes out Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Man. <laughs> so one of the one of the um giant smurfette oh but smurfette sees the xenomorph is like this has got to stop and so she tries to stomp on the xenomorph um the xenomorph goomba um a couple of times well, when the xenomorphs kill the, the henchmen don't they get the coins they've collected and i believe <laughs> carl he's the one that the xenomorph just got right carl just hit 100 coins so, so he went up got carl's <laughs> xenomorph got carl's extra life <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so Smurfette <laughs> killed the first Xenomorph, but it came back because of the 100 coins. She's like, what is this? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, everyone realizes these coins have special powers. They can give us another life. So who's the ones that are already greedy are even more greedy now. Santa doesn't like that. So he just terrorists, wraps them up, sends them back down the pipe. They go back to the North Pole. And they end up in the reindeer pen with the reindeer blocking. So, so they're all contained. So there's only a couple Smurfs left. I'd probably say there's about, I don't know, five Smurfette and Papa Smurf. So one of the five Smurfs 
he's like, oh, extra life. Awesome. So he tries. Is it hefty? He, hefty? Yeah, they'll say it's hefty. And he's, he smacks all the bricks trying to get some extra lives. The bricks, it's one of those bricks that doesn't do anything, though. It just crumbles. He's like, what the? And he gets, he's a little upset about it. <laughs> he's like, everyone else got coins. I got nothing. Um, and Papa Smurf's <laughs> like, I've always wanted to face a wizard more powerful than myself. <laughs> and he starts getting a fireball ready and he throws it at Santa. <laughs> Santa, he's, he's already taken out, you know, the Smurfs are contained, the, a lot of them. He didn't, he tried not to kill any of them because Santa doesn't want to kill too many people, but Smurfs are contained. You know, he got, he found a hundred coins and gave it to Jingle Feet. Jingle Feet's back alive, but he's at the North Pole watching the henchmen just because I can't kill Jingle Feet, man. I can't do it. So the, the terrorists are gone. Jingle Feet's with I him. Jingle Feet so died, and up. that's why he got so mad. Oh no, yeah, but then he found a hundred. Oh, that's right. That's right. So he, he gave he gave him he like one up mushroom. <laughs> yeah. So now it's it's coming down to it right now, where we have Mario still trying to protect his lands. Mario has like he knows the territory, but the I, the Smurfs are getting contained. The the Hans Gruber's crew's out of there. The elves, most of them have went back, or or at least continue the smurf so it's come down to santa papa smurf and mario and then the xenomorph running around all right so mario's running around he's all mad about the um you know all, all those people messing with this kingdom and then it just so, so happens to jingle feet who's now brought back to life he he hits mario with a big candy cane and of course when mario gets hit you know he usually <laughs> he'll, he'll like you know lose his ability whatever so he loses his xenomorph suit Oh yeah. So Mario's like, "It's a me, a Mario," and the Xenomorph. Now, now that Mar- Xenomorph doesn't see Mario as a Xenomorph, but as Mario, the Xenomorph attacks Mario and kills him. Oh, <laughs> I'm Mario! It's the Mushroom King. Wait, wait. Does, but does he turn little first and then he dies? Tell me. <laughs> yes, of course. He's like, oh, "It's a me," and he turns little, and Xenomorph's like, <sighs> "He's like, no, no, my new friend, my new friend. What are you doing?" And then the Xenomorph eats him. <laughs> I, I didn't think about the fact that they get little. So I'll say some of the Smurfs are little now. Like the only one still big is Smurfette and Papa Smurf. Um, and so Papa Smurf, <laughs> and poor Mario. So that's such a bummer. <laughs> His own teammate turned against him. <laughs> All right. Sam is very upset about this. And he realizes this is not the best Christmas he's ever had. <laughs> um, Mario has always brought him brought so many children so much joy during the holiday season especially all the video games so santa claus is getting a little bit emotional um and in the meantime he feels like right now he thinks even papa smurf has turned against him he's like two of my most peaceful you know people papa smurf and mario has gone papa smurf's turned against me and he's not sure what to do because he he realizes now papa smurf wants to face a stronger wizard and santa knows that he's the stronger wizard of the two of them um, but he really doesn't, he wants Papa Smurf back. He doesn't want Papa Smurf to be, uh, to be evil, but he, he's so he's, he's about to get blasted by this fireball. So, um, Papa Smurf, just as he's about to blast the fireball, the Xenomorph comes by and gives a big slash across his chest. <laughs> yes. The Xenomorph sees, and, uh, sees Papa so the, Smurf and goes after him. The fire, the fireball disappears and, um, he's still kind of big. And then the Xenomorph does another slash and Papa Smurf's normal size again. He's hurt real bad. <laughs> and then... Um, but he's he's not giving up. His will is strong, as we know. He's uh, but the xenomorph gets distracted. La, 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 la. La. <laughs> he gets the xenomorph then gets distracted by Smurfette, who's like Papa Smurf and running towards him. Then the xenomorph kills Smurfette, dude. Freaking ruins it. <laughs> oh snap! <laughs> and xenomorph is tearing it up. How can the Smurfs ever reproduce now? So, well, <laughs> Papa Smurf created her out of mud, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but Papa Smurf. He knows he's on his last leg. He's hurt real bad. And he sees Smurfette go. And he's like, I can't do this. Santa. Take my... Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> take my hat, the source of my power. I know yours was singed off. You can do this. He takes off the hat and gives it to Santa. In a moment of, you know, intense drama, he's like... La, 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 la. <sighs> And he dies. Papa Smurf, one of my most loyal wizards, helpers, I will not let you down. I will take this hat and re- help it reach its potential. Puts it on his head. Do, 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 do. <laughs> the Santa takes the mantle of the Papa's hat 
And all of a sudden, in the distance, the xenomorph hears, ho, 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 ho. And then all of a sudden, the voice says, you better watch out. And all of it, and the Smurfs, <laughs> the elves, everything, it's like everything pauses for a moment, and it's just Santa and the xenomorph. Does Santa have the fire flower, too? He finds one of those, a fire flower, a leaf, he finds them all, and he's got and then he's got the fire flower, he's got the leaf. <laughs> well, not even the leaf, he's got the statue suit, you know, that's in Mario 3, I think. <laughs> Turn through statue. He's got that, he can shoot fire. And he has, but, but on top of that, since he's the magical Christmas elf from the North Pole, he has the ice flower as well. So he's got all of that right now. Um, he's, fully, he's fully equipped, fully equipped, very fully equipped. <laughs> So Xenomorph sees Santa and is like, <sighs> starts running after him. And Santa turns into a little statue from Mario 3. <laughs> and so it's just as Xenomorph tries to grab him. So obviously Xenomorph can't bite through a statue. So he's unable to do that. And Xenomorph's like, <laughs> <laughs> so then he runs off and goes, hides into in, in another pipe somewhere. Sometimes when you go on so those Xenomorph's pipes, hiding in a pipe. And sometimes they're like extra levels and you have coins and mushrooms in there. Am I right? Yeah, no, no, exactly. Yeah, so he goes down in there and there's all these coins in there. So Xenomorph collects all the coins. So now he has a hundred coins as an extra life. And then, um, and then he, and then he hits a like a block in a you know when the mushrooms comes out of it. So Xenomorph eats the mushroom and now he, doo -doo -doo -doo, he turns into a giant Xenomorph Goomba. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So you got this Xenomorph coming out of a pipe. That's beautiful. Santa's on the other side in this epic scene. With all of his Mario powers, with with Papa Smurf's hat, plus he still has his magic sack, so he's pretty much borrowed from all his defeated comrades. He's borrowed several of their their powers, so he's got them all. He's like Mega Man, <laughs> and he wants Mega to Man's. use it for good because Christmas is coming. So this is the showdown, the ultimate showdown. Here it comes down to these two. In one corner we have Santa, giant, uh, giant. I don't know if he's giant, just normal Santa with a bunch of powers, and we got the giant Xenomorph in the other corner. Let's, well, let's gonna happen. See, well, Santa seen like this giant xenomorph. He he looks into his little sack of Mario uh, Mushroom Kingdom weapons. He picks up a leaf, so then he grows a raccoon tail. So now you got Santa with a raccoon tail, and he spins around, and the tail hits the, uh, the xenomorph as he's coming up on him. And it's so, and the blast. The, the, there's so much power so wait, behind wait, it that it actually wait, wait, breaks wait, wait, off one of the xenomorphs. So I lost the battle to the xenomorph when I had Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime could not beat the xenomorph, but a raccoon tail can. Yes, <laughs> well, it's 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 the oh. Mario Raccoon tail tail, so it's fine. So so he spins a tail and it knocks off on like one of Xenomorph's fingers or something. And then so then the acid, Xenomorph's acid blood comes out and gets on when Santa. The, when and the now acid he's injured. Hits Santa, his beard evaporates. Remy's in there still from, from Remy's his, in there from the last his battle. His beard yeah. coming out, and then he's struggling. <laughs> because he injured a Xenomorph, <laughs> Xenomorph is shrunk down to normal size and now. Santa's beard went like when he got hit in the beard like the fire flower flew away and so did the ice so he's still got a couple powers but he's not he's lost a couple of them too so the xenomorph's starting to realize this might be the end for him because Santa he's continuing he's strutting forward ho 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 I will not let Christmas be destroyed he's coming towards the xenomorph he calls his reindeer they fly out of the fight. I don't know how are we going to end this so, so I was well, wondering the reindeer what the reindeer down, reindeer. The Xenomorph looks like. So he goes after he eats Rudolph, or, or while he's attacking Rudolph, like hitting him with his little inner mouth. That's when Hermie, the, the elf, comes up and, and like sneaks in behind Xenomorph, starts pulling out the Xenomorph teeth. Because he's a dentist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then Santa remembers, finally realizes again the value of Hermie and having a dentist. Because before he looked down on Hermie, he's repentant of that now that Hermie's helping him. Um, so as the teeth are flying out everywhere, I really don't know how Santa's going to kill him. Like, what are we going to do? Well, well, at, well, he's pulling out teeth. There's acid blood and you know, Hermie. Hermie's getting all hurt and like, stuff. <laughs> Santa's getting mad. He's like, oh, oh, oh. What's the final? We got to figure out. How to and then, uh, so then Santa pulls a big box out of his sack. <laughs> it's a Christmas box, obviously. 
And they say, he grabs Xenomorph by the tail and he throws him in a box and he shuts the lid. So now Xenomorph's stuck in this box. Santa puts it in the back of his sleigh and he takes his reindeer, minus Rudolph, and they go flying off into, into space because, you know, Santa course, can do that. Of course. He goes around the world. Yeah. So uh, then, so yeah. Santa throws Xenomorph into space. Xenomorph, we think, is gone. Yeah. Is that what happened? And Santa thinks, yeah. okay, I saved Christmas. Now to go revive Rudolph. He goes down back to Earth, back to Mushroom Kingdom. 100 coins gives it to Rudolph. Rudolph comes back. Santa starts, you know, looking around saying, okay, how can I fix this world back, you know, with my magic? I don't want this Mushroom Kingdom to have a sad Christmas. So he starts repairing everything with his magic. He's, he's got Papa's magic and his magic. Um, he's even able to bring back, you know, Mario's kingdom. Mario comes back. He gives him coins. Papa Smurf comes back. All the good people come back. Even a couple of, um, of uh, Hans Gruber's henchmen gang. He brings them back and he takes them back to the North Pole. Wait, do, do that, do, does Hans Gruber's crew become elves now? Are they, are, yes, are yes, they now they are. Christmas elves? But while, while he's doing this, <laughs> here's, the, here's the good part I want you guys to really think about. While he's doing this, he's getting distracted because he's getting full of his Christmas spirit. He's happy again. Ho, ho, ho. Mushroom Kingdom, come back to us. And he's, re he's repairing everything, right? Wait, wait. I, out of Bubba Fett's ship, there was actually a third xenomorph egg. So the third xenomorph egg sneaks into Rudolph, right? <laughs> Even though Rudolph's been here. <laughs> uh, eggs. But here's the good part. Ru though, Rudolph's like, going to go. Rudolph goes. He's happy to be alive. He goes grazing. He comes across the egg. Yeah, but then this xenomorph realizes it's not time to make myself known yet. So no one knows that it's in Rudolph except for the xenomorph face hugger itself. So Santa saves Christmas, hitches Rudolph up to his team, goes back to the North Pole. He's got a brand new. Um, he's got a whole. Along with his elves, he's got the Smurfs to help him and Hans Gruber's team to help him. And everyone's really happy, and the credits roll, then post-credits. Is he more pops out of Rudolph? <laughs> Rudolph's, Rudolph's like, in the middle. <laughs> Rudolph's nose starts going, it starts going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly, <laughs> you see his uh, reindeer, a reindeer xenomorph. <laughs> Come pop out of Rudolph. That's awesome. <laughs> Right in the so, middle of the Christmas Eve flight. Now, now, now I will say, um, this was definitely interesting. Um, for any of our listeners who are listening to this, thank you. you to be thank artists, you for sticking through it. Yeah, actually, please, please think, But if any of you happen to be artists, please, please create for me a picture of a Goomba xenomorph <laughs> and Mario in a xenomorph suit. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will be forever into debt. <laughs> You, if you do this, and if you happen to do, you can send it to us. What's uh, what's our email address? Uh, brothersbornpodcast at gmail dot com or our Facebook page, facebook dot com slash brothersbornpodcast. Yeah. So so if you happen to render a picture for for our amusement of uh, Goomba Museum Morph, please send it to one of those so we can enjoy it and we will appreciate that. So Santa's the ultimate champion, but there's a little a little stinger at the end. But he doesn't realize at the end that he really the xenomorph has not been all the way taken care of. So there always has to be that, you know, what if, but Santa is a grand champion. Yes, yes. <laughs> and he made everything good again. Except now he has a Rudolph xenomorph. <laughs> <laughs> Which technically he created that himself because he brought Rudolph back to life. Yeah. So. The, what, what if he hitches a xenomorph to his sleigh? <laughs> he did. <laughs> but I don't know. I, we can let it be so that maybe this xenomorph stays good or something. Xenomorph on this crowley night. Please make my journey bright. <laughs> I think Santa, if anyone could bring the xenomorph to the right side, I think Santa could do it, though. I will say, David, clearly you have not watched the Alien movies, and I really think you need to rectify that. Clearly, clearly you don't know Santa Claus's power. I do. So I'm not talking about that. Just, you're just, just the way you're like, oh, I don't know. You, you, don't, you don't have a full understanding of the Xenomorph life cycle, which is okay. It's forgivable, but you need to rectify that and watch those movies. Uh, for... Okay. Well, if you need to edit anything out, no, of my I, I think part, not understanding. part of the charm of this is that you don't understand it. I think it's better yeah, that's that true. way. <laughs> so um, I think it's good that way. I do understand the power of Santa Claus. Yes. So. All right, everybody. Stay tuned and we'll see you later. Kevin, say bye. You haven't said bye yet. Oh, bye. All right. <laughs> Adios.
that's a wrap on 2021 Brothers Born Podcast, folks. Huge thank you to you. Thanks for hanging out with us this year. This started as a project that my brothers and I were doing for fun for each other. And it is still that, but now we have an audience and y'all are the best. And thank you to those of you who were part of the show and that you submitted some ideas for the Unlikely Throwdowns or for one of the topics we discussed. want to give a shout out to the artists for this week's episode art. Most of them are from repeat episodes, but huge thank you to Mika Baumeister for the picture of the Santa Claus hats, Diego Marin for the drawing of the alien, the xenomorph, and Claudio Luis Castro for the picture of Mario. You can find all of their work at unsplash.com. Also, a huge thank you to Blade of Fury, who let us borrow their picture of Papa Smurf. You can find that picture as well as a host of other awesome ones at deviantart.com slash blade-fury. Or you can check out his Facebook, facebook.com slash bladeoffury. So thank you again, and thank you to all the other artists that helped us this year. Although your work wasn't on this episode, we're certainly grateful. Huge shout out to Kevin, who helped me with the music for this episode. He actually wrote a good portion of it, most of it, in fact. So thank you to him. And uh, we are really looking forward to next year. We have some more throwdowns planned. We have an apocalypse series we want to do. And what what would you like to hear us talk about? Give us some ideas. Email us at brothersbornpodcast at gmail.com. Or check us out at Facebook, facebook.com slash brothersbornpodcast. Finally, thank you for a great 2021. Y'all are the best. Please share the show with your friends. Give us a review on your podcatcher, whatever you can do to help this thing grow. We would sure be grateful. So thanks again, everyone, and we'll catch you in 2022.